Today, the famous Kraft TV cameraman focuses on outer space for another exciting adventure in the world beyond tomorrow. Control deck to all stations. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off, minus five, four, three, two, one, zero! Fast Caramels, the delicious quick energy treat presents Tom Corbett's Space Cadet. Starring Frankie Thomas. This is the age of the conquest of space. For today, Tom Corbett and his unit base prepare for a dangerous mission in outer space. The pursuit of the deep space projectile. going on up here. And this had better be good. If you've ruined any of that gear. Uh, sir, it was um, an experiment. Uh, uh, yes, sir. We were conducting a test. Uh, testing the uh, range of high fidelity uh, frequency, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, we reached a maximum of 27,000 cycles. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. Well, for your information, Thistle, it would take a trained ear to hear frequencies of over 15,000 cycles. Now, is this what you call obeying orders? I told you to get this ship ready for immediate blast-off. We are, sir. Fully provisioned for a flight into deep space. Well, then get down on the control deck for briefing. Cadet Monroe will tell you what this operation is all about. Cadet Monroe, sir? Yes, Alex Monroe. He's an astrophysics research student that we're taking along. Well, get below. We blast off in 30 minutes. Uh, but, uh yes, sir. Uh, I yeah, I'll stop this thing. Oh, uh, is this... Uh, yes, sir. As soon as we are out in space, you're going to clean up this mess. Yes, sir. And no more music. Aye, aye, sir. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Now, as you can see, it's a relatively simple flight right out into deep space. The Sirius and its planetary system 11 light years away. Of um, course, we'll use hyperdrive. I presume you all know how to fly a ship on hyperdrive? <laughs> of course, Monroe. Oh, what do you think we are, primary school cadets? <laughs> I wouldn't know, Thistle. Now, when we get to Sirius, our job is to locate and reclaim a recording projectile that's orbiting around the star. A recording projectile? What's that? Well, it's a small robot rocket, TJ, equipped with instruments which can automatically record information on any area it travels through. Huh? I helped build the projectile. That's why I'm being sent on this flight. Now, are there any questions? No. Seems like a simple uh, enough operation Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what's this 
projectile doing out there in the first place? I mean, why would anybody want to know anything about Sirius? Well, it seems the Solar Guard wants to know, Astro. This is the first step in establishing an outpost in the planetary system. I trust that answers your question. Yeah, sure. Anything else? Yeah. What? What's fusing your tubes, Monroe? You've been giving us a needle ever since we came down here. Hey, easy, teacher. Oh, just easy. because he's a big brain type doesn't mean he can treat us like earthworms, I'm you know. I'm sure he doesn't yeah. mean to. When we get to know each other a little better, why... Corbett, let's not force any false friendships. I'm not interested. Monroe, we're making a long flight. We've got to work together. And that's all. As far as I'm concerned, you just three are ordinary space jockeys. The sign to take me out into deep space. No more. Uh, I don't want you to promote anything else. Oh, we won't, Monroe. That's for sure. Oh, and, uh, one thing more. This is my project. That means I'm second in command of this ship right under Captain Strong. Now, you follow my orders, or else I will make your lives miserable. Understand? Now, let's get this ship ready for blast-off. <laughs> Well, did I say this was going to be a simple operation? Yeah, sure it did. Well, I take it back, fellas. We're going to have our hands full on this job. We'll see more of today's exciting adventure very soon. Right now, though, our young craft friends, Candy and Casey, are getting ready for a party. They fixed up the cutest combination of refreshment and party favor cookies. A circus parade that you can have a lot of fun making, and everybody will have fun eating. These are the ingredients you should ask Mother to get for you. Some small, plain sugar cookies, a box of animal crackers, and a bag of those wonderful Kraft Dairy Fresh Caramels. Now the kids are unwrapping half a pound, that's 28 Kraft Caramels, in the top of the double boiler. Next, they add two tablespoons of water, like that. Now, as usual, when anything involves a hot stove, ask Mother to stir the caramels over boiling water till they're melted to a creamy, luscious sauce like this. Then put a dab of caramel sauce on each cookie, just like this. Spread it a little with the back of your teaspoon or a spatula if Mother has a small one like ours. Then, right away before the caramel has time to cool, Stand an animal cracker in the middle of each cookie, like that. Wouldn't these make slick favors for a party? And don't you forget that they taste, oh, just great. Far as that goes, Kraft Caramels always taste great, whether you make them into fancy fare like Candy and Casey's Circus Parade cookies or eat them plain. So be sure to ask Mother to get a bag of Kraft Dairy Fresh Caramels next time she's out shopping. <laughs> Your control deck. Listen, we're on direct course to Sirius. We hold this present speed. We'll cross the orbit of Pluto in about 27 minutes. Right. And that's when we open up on hyperdrive. Yeah, we're all lined up for it. What time's it order if I go off watch now? Everything's set on automatic. Sure thing, TJ. Oh, thank you. This hope. What do you want, Monroe? Come with me. I need your help. Oh, look, I just pulled a 12-hour watch, boy. I'm going to sack you. You can sleep later. This is important. Yeah, well, so's my sleep. Uh, not to me. I need your help right now, and I'm ordering you to give it to me. Oh, you are, huh? I got a hot space flash for you, Mr. Big Brain. Now, you cut that kind of talk, Thistle. I don't like it. Yeah, well, that's too space flash and bad. I'm sick of your... What's going on up here? I can hear you two on the control deck. What is this, Thistle? Sir, I just pulled a 12-hour watch, and Monroe comes up here and orders me to do some work for him. Orders? I was forced to, sir. Believe me, I've tried to be cooperative, but unless you're a member of the Polaris unit, you get no assistance whatsoever. Did you bother to find out what it was that uh, Cadet Monroe wanted? Oh, no, sir. He didn't give me a chance to tell him, sir. He arbitrarily refused. Well, did you bother to find out if Cadet Corbett was busy? Or Astro? Did you take into consideration the fact that he has just pulled a 12-hour hitch? Well, no, sir. It's just a few minutes' work. I see. Well, we're going to put a stop to this right now. I want cooperation on this trip from everyone, and I mean cooperation. Now, you will do whatever you can to help Cadet Monroe. 
And you will take into consideration the crew's working schedule. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. Now you can pass this on to Corbett and Astro. You cadets are going to get along on this mission, or I'll know the reason why. Well, Vessel, you heard the order. Cooperation. Oh. Hello, Astro. Check in. Yeah, Tom. Go ahead. I'm getting a low reading on the hyperdrive pumps. Check it, will you? Right away. Astro, come with me. I need your help. Heavy work. Sorry, Monroe. I can't leave the power deck. Put it on automatic. Are you space happy? On a flight like this, one misfire from these hyperdrive reactors, and we'd we'd be a million miles off course. If you've done your job properly, the reactors won't misfire. Oh, wait a minute. I don't always... argue with me. You coming, or do I go to Captain Strong? You would, too, wouldn't you? What do you think? I'll give you three minutes to get up topside. No more. Hello, Tom. Check in. Go ahead, Astro. I just switched the power deck controls into you. Take over, will you? What's the idea? Oh, the big brain wants cooperation. Oh, hello, Monroe. How's the work going? All finished. Nothing to do now until we reach the projectile. Well, we're near the end of the line now. We start decelerating in about 20 minutes. And there's Sirius, the brightest star in the heavens. From Earth, anyway. You know, Corbett, <laughs> you puzzle me. Oh, how's that? Well, you're everything a space cadet should be. Your work is excellent. But uh, those unit mates of yours, Astro and Thistle, <laughs> why do you spend so much time wasted on them? Well, I'll tell you, Monroe. A crew is only as good as all of its members. But these guys are just rocket jockeys. Well, Astro, TJ, and myself make up a crew. And if one of us flops, the crew flops. Well, if you believe that, you're no better than they are. Well, let me tell you something, Monroe. As far as I'm concerned, there's no nobody on the power deck that's better than Astro, and TJ is the best astrogator in space. Me? I'm the ordinary rocket jockey. All I do is point this ship and let her go. And if that's your idea of what a space cadet should be, you better come out from behind those books and wise up. Well, if you really believe that, you are no better than they are. For once, you're absolutely right. Corbett. Sir. What's our ETA on Sirius? Three hours, sir. We begin deceleration in about 15 minutes. Oh, blast it. We should have picked up that, that projectile on our radar scanner over two hours ago. Why, we're in the right position, sir. Uh, that is, if uh, Thistle's astrogation isn't off. TJ's astrogation is never off. We've been following course and speed as planned, sir. All right, relax, Corbin. There's nothing wrong with Thistle's astrogation. Plain and simple truth is the projectile is lost. And now it's our job to find it. Fred, our bridge to control deck. No sign of the projectile yet. Change course. We haven't found the projectile yet, Astro. Stand by for another course change. the end of this orbit, sir. Shall we change course again? Oh, you might as well, Corbett. Tell Thistle to plot another orbit closer to Sirius. Radar bridge to control deck. Check in, quick. Go ahead, TJ. I found it, Tom. Great, where is it? It's in the northwest quadrant, just passing through sector 12. It's practically on top of Sirius. Right, stand by for orders. Sir, we're still going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, sir. Well, I'm going to get through fire up course, so you see, when the projectile hit this resistance, it could no longer maintain its orbit and began spiraling into Sirius, getting closer and closer. Well, how close is it now, sir? <laughs> Much too close, I'm afraid. 
In its present course, it should take the projectile about three hours to make a complete circle. Of course, it will lose uh, 5,000 miles each time. Well, sir, how much time does that give us to go in after it? I would say no more than six hours, Corbett. It's a mighty narrow margin of safety, sir. I'm aware of that, Monroe, but I don't intend to lose that information without a try. We're going in after the projectile, we're going to couple on, and we're going to drag it out of there if we can. All right, Corbett, tell this will plot an intersecting orbit and then pour on the neutrons. I have, sir. Hello, TJ. Give me a heading over to that projectile and then brace yourself. This is going to be the fastest and the hottest trip the Polaris ever made. Power deck and control deck, check in. Go ahead, Astro. Tom, I hope you're not going to want much more speed than this. These hyperdrive reactors are getting pretty hot now. Well, we're in parallel orbit with the projectile now, Astro. Hold this speed while we couple on. Right. All hands. Stand by. Coming alongside. And inside compass orbit. Couplers ready, sir. Everybody brace. We're hooking on. Couplers are secure. Projectile is tight alongside. Nice work, Corbett. Thistle, get to the control deck on the double. Corbett, while we're on the projectile, you and Astro, see what you can do about pushing it out of this orbit. I uh, We're going aboard, sir. Well, can you think of any other way to get that information, Monroe? Oh, no, sir, but uh, I thought we'd try and push the projectile further away from... The... <laughs> we can't count on being able to do that, and I don't want to lose that information. Oh, Thistle. Yes, sir. You're going aboard the projectile with Monroe and me. We're going to bring over the recording information. Aye, aye, sir. And the airlocks are in conjunction, so we won't need spacesuits. Let's go. Right, sir. After you, Mr. Brain. Hello, Astro. Yeah, Tom. The skipper and the fellows are uh, going aboard that projectile now to start bringing back the information. While they're there, we're going to try and haul the projectile away from Sirius. Oh, okay, but take it easy, will you? These pumps have got quite a load on them now. Astro, you worry too much. Okay, let's go. Full blast on starboard steering rockets. Oh, hi! Boy, not much room in this thing, is there? Uh, these rockets weren't made for carrying passengers. Where's that recording equipment, Monroe? Top side, sir. The access chamber. Right. What was that? Tom's just trying to push this thing. What's the matter? Brainy is scared. All right, stow that thistle. Let's get to work. Come on, snap out of it, Monroe. We got work to do. Uh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Give it to you, Tom. These pumps won't take it. Oh, just a short burst, Astro. Not more than two seconds. That's all I need. Well, okay. Keep your fingers crossed. Here goes. Okay, Astro. I think that's doing it. We're swinging it around. We're got... Corbett to Captain Strong. Corbett to Captain Strong. Come in. Come in, sir. Where is it? Uh, way back there. To port. Hey, how'd we get so far ahead of it? All that power we were using. Hello, Corbett to Captain Strong. Can you hear me, sir? Come in. Captain Strong to Corbett. Go ahead, Corbett. Sir, are you all right? Well, yes, Thistle and I are all right, but we can't find Monroe. He must be trapped in the access chamber below. What happened? Well, the projector tore loose, sir, when we were giving it that blast burst, burst trying to change course. You're drifting far behind us now. Funny part, Tom, she's still spiraling towards Sirius. Yeah. Well, listen, we have enough oxygen for about eight hours. If you can help us, do it. But I don't want any foolish heroics, Corbett. And that's an order. Yes, sir. Spaceman's luck, Captain. And transmission. Okay, Astro. But the only thing we can do now is... Monroe, where did you come from? You got away just in time. How could you? It 
It all happened so quickly. Well, well I was standing next to the airlock, and, and, and I heard the, the projectile start but to break away. that's impossible. I... You would have been blown right out into space. There wasn't enough time. Well, oh, I... Oh, yes, there was, Tom. There was plenty of time. Because he left that projectile before there was any trouble, you yellow space... No, I'm going to leave my life. I ought to tear you apart. You're kicking out on T.J. and no. the skipper. Cut it out! It. Now, fighting isn't going to help now. Uh, T.J. and the skipper are falling into the sun. And we've only got just five hours to get them out. Uh, and then I have to put you both in the brake. And do it myself, I will. Okay, Tom, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what happened, Corp, but I lost my... Never head. mind that now. Now, listen, Mr. You stand by for emergency speed and repair those couplers. Monroe, you plot another intersecting course between the projectile and us. I... We're going to pull Captain Strong and TJ out of the sun. We'll be back very soon with the rest of today's adventure. But first, how about a delicious, chewy, soft craft caramel? I hope there's a dishful right near your television set so you can help yourself right now. If you greet Mother proper by telling her why Kraft Caramels are actually good for you, she'll probably let you have them often. Tell her that they're made with only the best quality ingredients in spotless candy kitchens. Tell her there's a pint and two-thirds, almost a quart, of good wholesome milk in every pound of Kraft Dairy Fresh Caramels. But what you want to remember is... The swell, true caramel flavor that really fills the bill when you're hungry for something sweet. Kraft caramels are not too chewy, not too soft, but just right. Kraft caramels come in bags like this, 56 individually wrapped pieces to the pound, or in 50 family packs like this. Five nickel bars of Kraft caramels wrapped together. And of course, there's this famous nickel bar. Six wonderful, chewy, soft craft caramels in either vanilla or chocolate flavor. Only five cents. You can still use the wrapper from any package of craft caramels to get your Space Cadet membership kit. Now, here's what you'll get. This handsome Space Cadet ring, just like Tom and Astro and TJ's. Your official Space Cadet shoulder patch. And your signed membership certificate in the Tom Corbett unit. Send one Kraft Caramel wrapper plus 25 cents and your name and address to Space Cadet, Box 26, New York 46. And we'll send your membership kit along right away. That's the last load, Captain Strong. All right, good. Now when Corbett gets here... We'll have all everything we need, and this projectile can drift into the sun with no important loss. Uh, I hope it gets here soon. It's getting awful hot up here. It's going to be a lot hotter before long. So you think we should try to contact the Polaris again? It's been almost three hours since we've talked to them. Well, I can try, but these belt communicators don't have much range. Hello. Strong to Corbett. Come in, please. Come in, Corbett. Come in. Corbett to Captain Strong. Can you read me, sir? Come in. Come in, Captain. It's useless, Corbett. We're too close to serious. It's blocking transmission. Oh, have you figured out that course to intercept them? Yes, it's coming around toward our present position again. We'll have to move fast. Mm -hmm. What a story, Tom. I don't know yet, Astro. Listen, how long can we sustain emergency speed? Not too long. How much time do you need? Well, enough to catch a projectile, match its speed, and still be able to pull out again if we don't make contact. Still figuring the safety margins, brains. So that I know Astro. how you fellas feel, and I don't blame you, but I know what I'm talking about. If we can't catch the, the projectile by this point here, we're done for. If we miss at this point, we can at least pull out and try again. We won't miss. What's more important, we can't. The closer we are to the sun, the hotter it gets. TJ and the skipper must feel like they're inside an oven already. All right, so we got to do it this time or not at all. Right. Getting it pretty close. Now listen, we're all, we're all going to do this together. And if you want out, let me know now. Well, hey, wait a minute, Tom. What do you mean if he wants out? If we want to risk our lives, Astro, it's our business. But I'm not going to be responsible for his. I don't have much choice, do I? Oh, yes, you do. You can take the jet boat. We'll load it up with supplies. Send out a distress alert on our long-range transmitter, and you can be picked up by a rescue ship. Well? Thanks, but I'll stick it out. All right. Let's hit it, Monroe. You plot the best position to meet that projectile as it comes around. Astro, stand by on your power deck. We're going to play a little game of galactic hide-and-seek. Cadet Corbett, acknowledge, please. Captain Strong to Cadet Corbett, acknowledge. Oh, it's no use, sir. You must be so close to serious now, all transmission's being blocked off. I wish that heat was blocked off, too. So you really think... What? 
How do you think Tom and Astro can pull us out of this mess? I've been thinking about that for a long time, Thistle. I'm afraid I don't know the answer. Yeah, Tom? The projectile is coming around. We blast in less than a minute. Now, have you fixed those couplers? How long do I have? Not more than ten minutes. I'm afraid I'm not going to do it in time. Somebody's going to have to go topside on the hull and make the connections by hand. Okay, I'll take care of that. Monroe, check in. What's our position and where is the projectile? It's coming around now. Open her up, Tom. Pour it on. Right. Okay, Astro. Let her rip. You bet we are. Hold this speed. Monroe, check in. Go ahead, Corbett. Come on down here and take over. I've got to get into a spacesuit and go topside and make that connection. I can't come down, Corbett. What do you mean you can't? Come out on the hull. Whoa. What? I'm waiting to make that connection. A connection? But you can't. Do you think you rocket jockeys can do everything? Give a brain a chance. Okay. And the spaceman's luck, Monroe. Thanks. I'll need it. Corbett to Captain Strong. Come in, sir. Come in. Captain Strong to Corbett, go ahead. We're coming alongside, sir. Stand by to abandon projectile. Oh, with pleasure, Corbett, with pleasure. Hello, Astro. Yeah, Tom. Steady now. Stand by to match speeds and couple on. Where are they? Uh, steady, sir. Taking them steady. so long. Come on, let's go. That connection's secure. As I can make it. What about the airlocks? Well, they're open. TJ and the skipper should be aboard any second now. You better hurry. It's awfully hot out Hello, here. Tom. TJ and the skipper just came aboard. Good. All right, Monroe. Release the couplers. Let the projectile go. You bet. Astro, stand by on starboard steering rockets. We're getting out of here. I am with you, pal. Hello, Tom. Couplings are released. The projectile's drifting. All right. You get into the airlock. Astro, full blast on steering rockets. Let's get out of this furnace. I'm getting a bad case of sunburn. Okay, Astro. We're out of danger now. Study on standard hyperdrive. Captain Strong, am I glad to see you, sir. No more than I am to see you in this control deck again. Yeah, as much as I hate to say it, your ugly mug looks off. Well, good to me, boy. The pleasure is mutual, TJ. You did a nice job, Tom. You and Astro. Oh, I never thought... Well, you'd excuse ever... me, sir, but Monroe deserves the credit. Monroe? Yeah, but I thought... Well, on a projectile... Well, he managed to get aboard the flare safe. Well, how could he? Well, he was lucky, sir, and uh, if he hadn't been with us, if he hadn't risked his life to couple the flares to the projectile, why, you and TJ wouldn't be here now. Yeah, who'd have thought it? Where is he now? Uh, below with Astro. Get him up here, will you? All right, sir. The laboratory isn't the best place at the academy. Not at all. Any place that can produce a guy like you has got to be all right. No, 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 no. The unit's the important thing. Guys like you and Tom and TJ... I tell you, we're just rocket jockeys. You! But what am I? I'm just the brain. Well, there you are, sir. You asked for it. I think you've got it. Cooperation. Saturday morning, the makers of Kraft Caramels take you to the world beyond tomorrow. Don't forget to be with us for next week's exciting adventure of Tom Corbett's Space Cadet. Starring Frankie Thomas and featuring Al Markham and Jack Grimes. This has been a Rock Hill production presented by Kraft Caramels.